versions. Okay, well, what kind of editorial comment are you want to make about that? <laughs> Let me turn that behind. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> Are you going to run for government? <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, I have uh, really enjoyed my, my public life. Mm -hmm. I really have. and um, But I enjoy what I'm doing now, too. And I enjoy, now that the book is done, I'm enjoying life. And I'm enjoying my leadership speaking. And I'm the leader in residence at UT's College of Business. And, um, and so right now, I am focused on building better leadership. How's that for a good non-answer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Protests have been part of our country since tea was thrown in the Boston Harbor. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that has been part of the fabric of America. And that's one of the great things about our country, that we can decide that we're going to say and do whatever we want, get out there, freedom of speech. It's a good exercise. Good exercise. You know, I think it's important that people... Uh, feel that they can vent in that kind of way. Protests are an important part of the American culture. Yes, sir. I was looking through the library's computer for Michael Connolly, and he said he's got a DVD. So I got the DVD, and it was you. One of your, it was when you had just written Scarecrow, and you were doing one of your uh, book, uh, book talks. hours down here. Yes. In fact, you had some kids from... Uh, I think the Downtown Academy, who were the, who right. the kids that you had that day. The question is, are all of your book hours on DVD? Yes, they at the all library? are. And yes. they all are at the library. Yes. I really enjoyed that program. Yeah. And yeah. Michael Connolly is down here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. That's good that you checked it out. That, yeah. So, yeah, they should all be at the public library. And we also have them on cable, if you ever want a copy, too. City cable. Yes. I'm going to thank you first for hiring Stephen Ho. <laughs> and, um, yes. Also, you know, this is such a great book. I, I wanted to ask you if maybe you might consider um, writing some kind of a, um, a study guide for it where, where people could have uh, questions and maybe some, you know, some blanks in there where, where they could, you know, have it in clubs or something like that. Or maybe you could put it on your website on PDF. Mm -hmm. That's a good suggestion. And also, is there a is there a possible memoir for a second book, or, or what are you thinking about for a second book? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very enthusiastic about the idea of a second book. Um, so, and, and everything I had to say, I put in this book. <laughs> I did leave some stories out. And um, so a reporter the other day was asking me, Sue Carlton, who did a column, she said, well, what about this story? What about that story? And I said, well, I couldn't put them all in. So she said the second book, but I, I don't know much about a second. I would have to really do something else, really a meaningful. No, but to, yeah, I'd have to yeah, something out big. You did have a recipe in the Tampa Bay uh, magazine a while back. Yes, I could write a cookbook. <laughs> I could take my father's old Italian recipes and put them in a book one day. I remember your father was Italian, um, linguine with clam sauce. That's right, yes. that's right. Yeah, you gave that to us after school. He did. Oh. <laughs> Actually, the only reason I won when I first ran for county commission um, in back 26 years ago was because of I had so many volunteers, they were inspired by my father's Italian cooking. And they really didn't care how I felt about it. They loved coming over to my parents' home and enjoying the Italian cooking, and he was largely responsible for me winning that first race. <laughs> he really was. Yes, James. I worked with you um, as when you were supervisor of elections, so I have to ask you, and I know this is critical, 
but what do you think about Governor Scott's changes in uh, voter registration and the restriction of hours in voting? And our elections went perfectly well and there was no fraud. So I wonder what your opinion is about the changes in voter registration. And I think that voter registration and the voting process should always be made easier at all times for mm -hmm. everyone. And one of the great, um, I think, uh, changes in election laws over the years has been early voting. Frankly, if we had early voting in 2000, we would not have had uh, the butterfly ballot debacle and other things that led to erroneous voting because that problem would have been ascertained two weeks before election day and could have been fixed, and it would have made all the difference. We live in a different society, and change has changed, and because change has changed, we can't continue to look at voting as a one-day exercise because that's not the world we live in anymore. So I really think the advent of early voting has been great. You've really got to open up the process to make sure that people have the ability to vote. It is a, we had a very, you know, secure system, and we did not have voter fraud. Uh, and, and I think voter fraud is actually very rare. So um, I'm always for really opening up the voting process. Thank you. My opinion. Yes. Uh, does Mayor Bob ever confer with you with regard to uh, the one thing about you in office is you had visionary endeavors where you could see down the line and what you needed to do to get there as opposed to let's do this tomorrow and not think about it. Unfortunately, thanks to term limits, you didn't have a chance to see that to fruition. But is there any communication there that maybe sees us getting towards some of those things? Well, you know, it was nice that um, when Bob was elected, he is someone who's been a friend for many years. We go Thank back, you. you know, almost 30 years, and not quite that long, but just about. Uh, he actually was in charge of signage for my county commission race in 1985. Um, he did a very good job of putting the stakes in the ground. Yeah, I have to give him a major thumbs up in that department. <laughs> but actually, no, Bob has grown and changed and uh, I think was really ready to be mayor this time. And I'm really pleased with how he's doing. Um, but I also don't want to interfere. You know, no one wants that. And, and so I've really, fortunately, writing the book has really kept me away from downtown and, and the city, and I think that's important because it's really important for a new mayor to find his own footing and to find his own voice. And I had to find my own voice, and it doesn't happen just because you take the oath of office. That Finding that voice takes time, and sometimes there's a moment where you, you find it. And, um, and I think that's important for people in executive positions to find their voice in their own way and in their own time. All right, is that it? You sure? I, I yes, know this Nancy. is a hard one, and you probably might not be able to answer it, but other than this wonderful book, what is your favorite book of all time? Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, I don't have one favorite book. I have favorite biographers. I like history. And okay. so, like, I love David McCullough for Isaacs, Isaacson. Is it Isaacs? Yeah. Just wrote yeah. This yeah. Right. <laughs> He's such a favorite, I don't have his name right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I like certain biographers and certain historical writers. Okay. And I don't think there is one book. Um, when I was a little girl, I liked Harriet the Spy. Remember that book? <laughs> that was such a good book. And I always liked all the Nancy Drew books and Hardy Boys. Um, but, but, you know, as an adult, I gravitate towards biographies. And I really like good, good biographies, and I like great historical fiction books, mysteries. I like historical mysteries a great deal. And my favorite place to be is a bookstore. I just yeah. love bookstores, and I always go through all the, all of them. I still remember my favorite Christmas of all times. My dad took us to Haslam's. This was in the 1960s. And it was about a week before Christmas. And he's, I have two older brothers, and he said, let the three of us just run through the store, and he said, you can pick out ten mm. books each. Wow. Whoa, ten books. I couldn't father. believe it. Yeah. And I can remember just going through the stacks. And, and I'd run it. Each one, I'd run up to him and say, is this one okay? He said, you don't have to ask my permission. You can just pick ten books. And then he took each of the ten books and he wrapped them in brown paper wrapping with rope. And in addition to all the other Christmas gifts that Christmas morning, each of us had a stack with brown paper wrapping and twine rope. 
And I'll always remember that Christmas underneath the lights of the Christmas tree, taking that sack and, and uh, oh, getting the twine. And I already knew the books that were in there because I had picked them out. And all the other toys spread all around. And I sat there with my books. And I always thought that was the best, best gift in the whole wide world. There's nothing better than a good book. Like this one. <laughs> about, about um, Pam and books, though, and about how much she really loves history. Every once in a while on the book talk show, I would have, I would be all ready 